Welcome to the WordPress Photography Podcast, the podcast for photographers who want to learn how to get the most out of WordPress to grow their photography business. You don't need to be a geek to understand WordPress. Settle back and listen as we show you how. Now, here's your host, Scott Wyden Kivowitz. Welcome to episode 120. My name is Scott Wyden Kivowitz, and today I'm joined by my guest, James Mayer. James is most known for his street photography and photography talks at conferences, articles at industry sites like Digital Photography School and Photo Focus, and of course, his eBooks. But James has been a commercial photographer for many years, and he's been working with clients including Daily News, Tiffany & Co., and many other New York businesses and businesses around the world. And I'm very fortunate to call James a friend, and I'm delighted to be able to share something quite amazing that he's been working on during the pandemic. And uh, it's something that will that can get your, your creative juices flowing uh, while stuck at home and limited to photographing uh, close to home. And so this episode, while it's kind of a pivot and shift, it's also not a pivot and shift, which is why this episode is not called a pivot and shift episode. Um, but it was also something, what we're going to be talking about is something that really came out of this pandemic. Um, so uh, welcome to the show, James. Uh, I, I've, as you know, I've been wanting to get you on here for a while. We finally got it to make it to work. And uh, this is going to be a good, good conversation. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. And thanks for all those uh, kind words. It's uh, good to be <laughs> on here finally. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, so what are some of the struggles that uh, you've had photographically in your in your business during the pandemic? Uh, yeah, it's been, I mean, for everyone, it's been a, a crazy year. I mean, uh, like for my business, it's, uh, you know, I always thought, you know, my, I have kind of a very diverse, strong business, a lot of marketing channels. I've worked on it for, you know, 15 years. Uh, the risk that I always thought I had, that the one risk was just like, if I broke my leg or got sick for a whole year or something like that, like, so I was kind of prepared for that, but you know, pandemic doesn't really, uh, it's not on your radar. Um, so, you know, <laughs> yeah, not at all. So, you know, I mean, everything events, um, uh, you know, I do a ton of workshops and tours and, and just like everything just kind of dropped off except for some print sales and, and the, you know, digital side. Um, and then on top of that, I had to watch my, my three-year-old cause thankfully my, my wife's jobs, you know, working remotely, but going strong, but so, uh, you know, quickly overnight, it was, uh, I was a kind of full-time, uh, dad working in the mornings and nap times and evenings. Uh, and like my business is lucky in that it'll, when, when this stuff is over, it, it'll come back. But, uh, yeah, it was just a complete, complete shift. Um, so that was, uh, you know, really had to start trying to figure out how to, um, in the time that I had, you know, find other income sources and find other things to do. And so I created some, you know, digital classes and, a lot of what I did actually at the time was um, just, you know, I have a, big, a mailing list I've grown and with different photographers and just to like give free inspirational stuff, uh, you know, write a lot of articles for them and, and uh, do things to keep myself inspired, uh, especially when I'm chasing around a kid 24 uh, seven, the, you know, the photography side gets a little exhausting. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah. So, so you've, uh, you've, literally shifted to a hundred percent digital at this point uh, mm -hmm. as your way Completely. of getting past the, the complications through the courses and, uh, and this new end endeavor. Yeah. Um, it, it will be good to see what happens um, once the pandemic's gone and people start getting their lives back to normal. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I think in a way you're fortunate because the, the tours that you do around New York city are heavily outside Right. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. E even as even as people get their lives back to normal, they're still going to be concerned. Mm -hmm. But you'll, you're still going to get hired for tours because it, it's people are going to want to get out and they're going to want to see New York City and they're going to want to learn about the history. And uh, they're not going to want to be inside. For, <laughs> for very long no, definitely time. not. Yeah. So, I mean. I'm, I'm already starting to get like inquiries for, you know, second half of, of next year, which is great to see. Uh, and it's, I'm like, you know, p putting them in a holding pattern, like, yeah, I think this will work. Uh, let's talk in, uh, in, in a handful of months of uh, vaccines coming <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that, that's fortunate. The events will, will take a, a longer to, to come back. But yeah, uh, yeah that's, um, yeah. So, so, so really, I've been just trying to kind of 
uh, send a lot of comment, you know, send a lot of content to all of my whole photographer list to keep that stuff kind of right. fresh for when it comes back. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, it's important, especially because, you know, um, a lot of photographers wind up, uh, and, and educators, they, they, they put a lot of their, um, their eggs into the social media basket mm-hmm. and, uh, really at any given moment, as many people know, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, they can all, they can take your down. So, mm-hmm. um, building up that list, interacting with that list is extremely important from a, uh, from a business standpoint. So it's good that you're, um, that you're, uh, keeping on top of that. Definitely. Yeah. Um, it, was, so, it was my lifeline. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so during the pandemic, uh, so many photographers feel like they, um, that they shouldn't be picking up their camera. Um, mm-hmm. many people aren't looking to hire photographers. Many jobs are being canceled, uh, whether it's headshots, weddings, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So sure. Many photographers are working, but I would estimate it's probably a good 50, 50 split between those who are working and those who, um, you know, are, are still struggling to get by. So, for the photographers who are fortunate to have work, whether in photography or beyond, but aren't feeling the creativity that they usually mm-hmm. feel, you've created something to help with that called Close to Home, a photo salon. Yeah. Can you share what that is? Uh, yeah. So, you know, one of the things that I mean, it's uh, that I noticed when I was emailing people is a lot of them were saying that they just weren't feeling inspired. Um, and, you know, I was having trouble with that, too. Uh, I was just exhausted all day, you know, and. Um, so I wanted to create something to kind of bring people back, uh, to that. And I, I started, it started kind of organically. It wasn't necessarily just like an idea that popped into my head. Um, one of the things I did to inspire my list was I created a, uh, a contest just to kind of see what everyone y- y- could do. And it was called, um, five blocks from home, uh, during, you know, the, the really kind of lockdown part of, uh, of the pandemic. And I said, you know, uh, we'll do a month or a month or two long, long contest. And the goal is just to take the best photos you can send me five, um, that are taken either within your home or within five blocks. And it was amazing. I got a ton of uh, entries. People said they loved it. They had never tried to shoot, you know, like that. A lot of people just shoot when they travel and do different stuff. And, um, you can see, you can see the, uh, the, um, results. I put the, all the best results on my website. That's in one of the recent blog posts, but, um, it was just incredibly inspiring what people came up with, uh, really creative stuff. And so from there, you know, and from the emails I got from people at that, that, about how inspiring that was, I thought, you know, it might be a good time to just create a community, create something around this general idea. Um, and so that's when I created, uh, you know, it's the, the name for the site, it's two different things. It's uh, the Home Photo Salon. So it's homephotosalon.com, but the tagline is close to home. Um, so, you know, I started, I, I sent out a, a survey to the mailing list, you know, uh, it, would you be interested? A lot of different questions about it. Um, and then started to create it. And um, uh, Scott's been helping. We, uh, we've we just basically finished uh, a beta with um, uh, 40 different members. And it's been like an amazing experience, uh, not just for them, but for me as well. Um, you know, part of this selfishly was for me, I needed more inspiration as well. So I wanted to create a, a group that I wanted to kind of be part of. Um, and it's just, uh, it's like, you know, you talk, I talk to people and, and there's a lot of people who are just like, I never thought to, to shoot this way. The, the, the idea of it is broad. You can shoot pretty much anything you want, but it's really based around kind of capturing your area that you go to a lot, you know, social streets, environmental photography, um, and just trying to kind of get inspired by the things that are around you every day and to shoot more and, uh, stuff like that. Yeah, so so the the photo salon is not necessarily on your property, but it's it's exploring the neighborhood, the town, the city. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's going, it's staying close to home, but but not in your home necessarily. You can yeah. stay in your home, but <laughs> yeah, there's one um, um, there's one there's one photographer. Her name's Vin, who uh, has two kids, and so she can't get out much. And she's been doing her entire stuff with just inside her home and her kids. And like half her photos are like her kids giving her, her these amazing scowls. Like, get this camera out of my face. Uh, and so she, she <laughs> yeah. she's really inspiring because of that. That so there are some that actually do it within just within their home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know that that is extremely challenging. Um, uh, it's so hard to always find something else to photograph inside mm-hmm. the confines of 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 four walls. That you know um, that uh, it's it just. It, it gets so redundant at times. So to, mm-hmm. to 
think outside that box is, is very hard. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a good challenge. It, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, and it's not, you know, the, it's about, uh, the idea of it is about, you know, creating, um, you know, the close to home is kind of just a general mantra, but it's about creating kind of like a, a, a vision and a cohesive thing. So, you know, people share old work and go through their old work and, um, you know, they, they can, you know, do some travel stuff and, but it's, it's about kind of, you know, taking your work and your vision and your idea and, over the long term, um, bringing it together to something that kind of is cohesive and and, and really kind of you know speaks to a, a just one thing. Yeah. So so what are some of the things that people could expect to accomplish um, mm-hmm. with with photo salon? So it's I mean just to give you a, a general yeah a general idea of the site first like it, there's two over there's two like different parts of it. One is the overarching entire salon aspect, which is you know I give a lot of photography education. I do a once a week post about something. Um, share lots of links to different really interesting articles. Um, I love sharing uh, like photo books and photo projects are kind of one of my like passions. And so I share a lot of Mm -hmm. uh, stuff of that to give people a really broad view of the different ways they can kind of take the genre and educate themselves. And um, there's like editing classes and things like that. And, um, but then there's like kind of the, what I think is like the secret sauce of the site is that it's, it's split into 20 person groups. Um, and so within that, you've got your own group that's kind of private uh, and everyone's sharing their photographs there and commenting. You know, we really encourage commenting and and getting people to, to explain, you know, help people like about how they can improve their photographs, of course, but also to give an idea of which photographs they like the most and what different people relate to. Um, and it's created this like amazing community. Um, it just uh, people have said that the commenting has been really, really helpful to help them figure out uh, what they're doing and, and, uh, you know, what works and what doesn't. And so it's, it's kind of the goal is to do the best of both worlds, have like, you know, photographer talks and events, but then with like for the whole group, but then within the little group, the smaller groups, um, they're going to have their own, uh, you know, little private, you know, zoom events for whoever wants to attend, you know, the idea is to kind of make it feel like you're sitting at a coffee shop or, or a bar with some, you know, friends that you've grown with and showing your photographs and talking about them. And so then the, fi- the, the goal is to, you know, have this group all come together and influence each other, help each other, um, broaden your idea of what you, you can photograph, um, but also help focus you in on what your best work is. And, you know, I, what I would love to see is over time um, at, and, you know, as we inspire people to go out and photograph a little bit more consistently, even in, you know, 20 minute spurts, like you go for a walk. Um, just everything comes together and just, you know, you really start to either create a really, you know, cohesive or multiple cohesive portfolios. Some people really love to create projects. I love to create projects, um, maybe help people create some photo books along the way. And, uh, that's, that's the ultimate goal for this. So is, is the, is the membership for this, um, is it separated into two plans where one plan you get the um, articles and the mm-hmm. challenges and events, and then the other plan you get that plus the groups, or mm-hmm. is it it just one one mm-hmm. one price and you get everything? Yeah, it's just it's one price and you get everything. So it's it's ten bucks a month, um, and then there's two free months uh, for uh, whoever wants to start because you know I want people to try it out and really see if it's for them, see if it's something they're going to use. So I want them to have enough time to do that. Uh, so yeah, it's just one you get everything. Um, yeah, and. Uh, Cool. And, and how have the, how have the beta testers been, uh, responding to it so far? Um, it's been amazing. I mean, I just put some, uh, you know, I just asked for a bunch of testimonials and, and put them on the, the front page of the site. So you can go to the site and you can see, um, both testimonials from people. And, uh, there's a, there's an introduction video and a video that will take you through kind of the, how the site looks and how to use it just so you get an idea of, uh, of what it is if you want to sign up. Um, but I mean, you know, it, it's been the, the things that people have said, first of all, what they, you know, it's, it, it is a bit like, it is a bit, the look of it feels like a social site kind of a little bit, but from what people said, it's, you know, the mm-hmm. anti, it's the kind of the anti Facebook, the anti Instagram. Um, it's, <laughs> you know, the goal is it, it's not, I mean, there's a like button of course, but the, the, really the goal is a, a small group of photographers, as I mentioned, commenting a lot. Um, it, it has a completely different intimate feel, uh, and so that, yeah. they, that, that's one thing they said. The other thing is, I mean, the most important thing is how inspired people have been. I mean, people are talking about being pushed outside of their boundaries, shooting more. I mean, you know, there's people who have said that they had a really hard time, like me, 
uh, getting out more uh, during the, the you know, heart of the pandemic this, this summer and year, uh, you know, are going out in the winter, in the cold, you know, times where they said they never would have wanted a photograph um, and coming back with these incredible images. Um, there are photographers who, you know, it's all different skill levels. So there's more experience. There's um, uh, just kind of newer photographers. And some of the newer photographers are definitely a little nervous kind of coming in, you know, whether they feel like they, mm -hmm. you know, belong in something like this, which we, you know, the goal, we really want newer and we want experience all to come together because the perspectives of each, it's, it's an amazing mix. Um, and they're getting really confident, you know, when they come back with a, a great photograph. Um, it, it's really good to see there's someone said like, you know, I, you know, I proved to myself and especially from what you guys say that I can take a good photograph. Um, so that inspiration is, uh, is the most important thing I think. And for me too, I'm, I'm shooting more, I'm pushing myself to go out at, at night after my kid goes to bed and stuff like that. Um, and that's just great. And, and people seem a little bit like they're, it, it, you know, it's all, it's only been going on for maybe two to three months and. Um, I, you can already see people becoming a little uh, more clear headed about what they're shooting and, and what they can shoot. And you're seeing them become more focused and more inspired by others work and seeing other people's pictures. Um, so that's great as well. Uh, that, that's a really important thing. So, so some of the things that people could, um, expect with the, mm -hmm. uh, with the site is, is basically to, to meet other photographers, to yep. start or finish a photo project. Um, to create a beautiful portfolio of work or to gain inspiration from a variety of photographers around the world. Mm. Sure, that's something that can happen on Facebook, but uh, I feel like it'll be a lot harder on a, on a platform like Facebook. And even, I might even say, even a platform like Flickr, where mm. it's basically wide open, right? Anybody can go on and do it, where what you've created is a... Um, a platform for people with, you know, with these goals in mind to find other people with the same goals in mind to come together mm -hmm. with good attitudes and wanting to help each other and inspire each other. And I think it's, uh, I think it's going to do really well. And I think, and I hope that a lot of the people who are listening or watching this episode, head over to the website, check it out, try it for two months, because I feel like they... Any, any photographer, whether street or commercial or whatever, can get a lot out of um, the interactions and engagement with, with other photographers on there. Where, what is the website? Where can people go to, uh, to check out more on it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's homephotosalon.com. Um, so you can go there. Uh, you'll, it'll have the general information on the website. Um, anyone who has questions coming in can email me at james at home photo salon .com. Um, and yeah, I mean, just for like, you're, you're completely right. It's, uh, you know, it's the small scale of it, uh, the, the groups and the long-term relationships that I think is, is different from everything else. Um, yeah. yeah and, uh, it, it's, yeah, that's basically, I mean, I think that's, that's basically, uh, where it's going. Um. So yeah, if you have any questions about that, just send me an email. So I want to put you on the spot before we mm -hmm. uh, finish this up. I want to put you on the spot mm -hmm. and uh, ask you um, if you could give three tips, three pieces of advice for any photographers who are struggling creatively right now. What kind of advice would you give them that they can do uh, today to yeah. get the ball rolling, to uh, get those juices flowing? Um, so, I mean, you know, it's the first thing or the hardest thing is just getting yourself like out the door, no matter if you feel like it or not. So I think it's like going to the gym almost, uh, it's like, you know, you got to set a time in your, in your calendar where no matter what, no matter what's going on, uh, you can get up, you get out and just photograph and, and it doesn't have to be a big thing. It could be 20 minutes. Literally I go out all the time for just 15 minutes, 20 minutes, um, and that repetition is going to like stimulate you because you're going to start to like see more. You're going to have days where you just walk for 20 minutes. And you're like, I didn't get anything. What am I doing? Uh, but that, that really it, it adds up. And it, it, for me, that's, that, that gets me inspired over time. And, and I start to come back with good photographs and it, it's really starts to spiral. Um, that's n number one. Um, uh, number two, I think is, uh, uh, I mean, for me, it's just looking at work of, of other photographers and not necessarily on, on like Facebook or Instagram. Um, although I use them, um, it's just like, you know, I love photo books. Uh, I love looking at different photo projects. 
Um, and I set aside time for that just for, you know, especially now it's hard to like read a book right now in the pandemic with the kid and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I, I, I'll read like two pages and fall asleep. Uh, but photo books, you don't have to read. <laughs> so it's, it's a great thing. You can just look at pictures. Um, so I think like doing some research and stuff is, uh, is definitely the, 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 the second half of it. Um, for a third one, uh, you know, I, I love, I, I really love editing. Um, I love just sitting with photographs and, and, you know, creating collections and trying to make little projects and think of ideas. And so when I do the looking at, at other like works of photographers, I definitely brainstorm things that I want to do. And, and right now, even with, with the kid, I'm, you know, really constrained to how often I can photograph and what I can do, but I do a lot of like, you know, planning and, and, you know, for when this is over and on what I want to do. Um, and that's really inspiring. It's kind of, pushing me just to think about what my next steps are going to be as, as things start to get better. Uh, so that, that's, that's definitely number three. Um, and I wanted, I, I, uh, had a little brain moment before one of the last things I wanted to say about the salon, um, was just that, uh, one of the really cool things is that people, uh, in it are from all types of areas, which is really exciting. So it's, you've got people in cities in suburbs, um, in the complete, you know, sticks in the rural areas, you know, uh, so a few of them are saying, I don't know what to shoot at, at the beginning, you know, uh, and now they're really starting to figure it out. And it's really awesome to see because sometimes like this social street photography, the most interesting work is in like, it's not in New York. I mean, there's, it, it can be anywhere. It doesn't matter where you are, but uh, some of my favorite stuff is just in these rural areas. So it's kind of, that, that's one thing I, I forgot to say that I wanted to add as well. And you even have a map uh, showing where each of the mm -hmm. members who want to share where they are um, of where they are. So that's cool. You can see you know, where, where around the world everybody is. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, regarding your first uh, tip there, what, mm -hmm. which was just to get out the door, um, I might even go a step further and say that if you're going out for 15, 20 minutes a day, whatever it is, and you walk out your door and yesterday you went left, mm -hmm. today go right. And then the yeah. next day go start, go behind your house and, and mm -hmm. walk, you know, the other way. Um, change it up because if you keep walking the same path every single day, for 15, 20 minutes, that's not going to help as much as uh, it'll help, but it won't mm -hmm. help as much as changing it up, you know, uh, trying different paths and, mm -hmm. and, and whatnot. Yeah, um, totally. So that's really um, important. We actually have, getting lost is <laughs> yeah, yeah, important. Yeah, get, get yourself lost. Get yourself lost. Yeah. <laughs> um, we actually have a rule. So we live close to a, a shopping center that has a pizza place and a Chinese restaurant and things like that. And we have a rule that if we walk to it one direction, we go around the building and walk back the other way. Uh, cool. we'll, we will never walk back the same way that we went to just because it, it, it's, you, you never know. You never know. You yeah. want to mix things up. Uh, you might see something. So yeah, um, and, uh, just to add two quick things that is, I would say yeah. that the time, the times to walk the same, the same path are just when the lighting is completely different. So yeah. walk different paths, but definitely like, you know, lighting and weather, uh, you know, uh, go check out cause it can look completely different. Um, and then the other thing you mentioned, like, you know, Chinese restaurants and all that is that a lot of people just, they think that they have to have the most interesting area to get the best photographs. And sometimes it's the complete opposite. Like, you know, the side of a Chinese old Chinese restaurant, you know, a parking lot, uh, you know, purposely go to places that uh, seem like they're really boring or seem like they, there's no good photographs there. And yeah. you'll, I think you'll quickly find that you're going to find some amazing stuff. In, in this shopping center that's near my house, um, there's two things that are quite notable um, on the whole photographic topic. One is there's a small little watch booth, which actually used to be one of those little Kodak booths where you can go and buy film and drop off your film to get processed. <laughs> and now it's just a guy goes like twice a week or whatever and he fixes people's watches. It's a drive through watch repair booth it's literally big enough for a, a human person and like you know some a little bit of tools and storage um so that's very photographic it was probably even cooler when it was a kodak booth but um the other thing uh in the same shopping center is you know i i'm, I'm i walk past or drive past the shopping center every single day and a few weeks ago there was a random car in the middle of this parking lot that was extremely rusty with no windows. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was as if the windows were busted out. And it was, it was almost as if somebody took this car and just abandoned it in the middle of this parking lot. And it was there for four days. Um, so you never know. No, uh, it's, what it's, might happen <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> so every all of a sudden everything comes together just uh yeah in a place that it have, never has yeah okay so homephotosalon.com i hope everybody mm -hmm. checks it out 
And of course, James May- jamesmayerphotography.com. We'll have all these links in the show notes. Um, thank you, James, for uh, joining me today. Uh, we are recording this the uh, New Year's Eve, <laughs> which, is, uh, which is great. Um, and uh, But of course, this does not go out till the end of January, but that's how we roll. Yeah, um, happy New Year. So happy, happy, happy New Year to, uh, to you, to your family, uh, and Happy New Year to everybody who is watching this, of course, or listening to this. Um, you can find the show notes, where to find James and the Home Photo Salon at imagely.com slash podcast slash 120. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, Google Play, wherever you listen to podcasts. Until next time. You've been listening to the WordPress Photography Podcast. To listen to other episodes and to subscribe to the podcast via iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and more, please visit imagely.com forward slash podcast.